Hello and welcome to the Scott All Stars Ultimate Rider Battle. I am so excited about this, I can barely contain myself. We have some of the very best bike riders on the entire planet racing against one another on Zwift. We've got the greatest mountain biker of all time, Nino Scherter, eight-time world champion. We've got Alistair and Johnny Brownlee, two of the greatest triathletes of all time. Plus, we've got four riders from the Mitchell and Scott World Tour team, including Amanda Spratt and Daryl Impey. This is going to be awesome. The concept is simple. Scott sponsors some of the world's best athletes across all disciplines. So, let's get them together for a virtual tear-up on Zwift. 12 laps of Crit City for what's sure to be a lightning quick 22.8 km long race. And if that prospect isn't spicy enough, we've split them into four teams of three, each with a mix of road, tri and mountain bike. Now most of them have never met their teammates before, but today they have to work together not just to win the race, but also sprint for points on 11 of the 12 laps to win the team prize. Now, check this lineup. Team one is road bro Esteban Chavez, winner of Il Lombardia and twice a podium finisher in Grand Tours, triathlete Kimberly Morrison and mountain biker Adri Frischnick. Team two is former Ironman world champ Sebastian Keenley, road pro Daryl Impey and Olympic silver medal winning triathlete Lisa Norden. Team three is two-time Olympic gold medalist Alistair Brownlee, top road pro Amanda Spratt and mountain biker Lars Forster. Team four is the greatest mountain biker of all time, Nino Scherter, triathlete and double Olympic medalist Johnny Brownlee, and road pro Jessica Allen. Oh, and just to make them look even more talented than they already do, we've got an all-star team of our own, led by GTN presenter Mark Threlfall, he'll be supported by Connor Dunn and Manon Lloyd from GCN, and Rich Max Payne from GMBN. Yes, I didn't get selected, uh, neither did Fraser Cartmel, but that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned, because he joins me in the virtual commentary box. Who are you most excited to be racing with or against? Yeah, it's really ex exciting to race with all of them. It's like, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, Scott family. Nino Scherter is just a, yeah, a bit of a phenomenal athlete, I think. Amazing uh, Scott athletes on the, on the line. Uh, I'm definitely a little bit nervous. I've never met either of my uh, teammates, to be honest. So um, this is going to be the first time. Will you see you will win? I, I actually think it's going to be Alistair Brownlee. I think a triathlete is going to get this. Uh, <laughs> and then in terms of the team, I think because it's Alistair and Amanda Spratt, I think the pair of them, I think uh, I think that team's going to completely clean up. So, uh, so yeah, but we'll see, man. I, uh, I'm, like I said, I just can't wait to watch. It's going to be fascinating. It's my first ever Swift race, so I'm hoping that I can work out how to use all the power-ups. It's going to be interesting. Had um, two wraps for lunch actually, which was nice. And I'm hoping I don't see them again. Nothing to worry about. Only a crit race against guys like Nino Scherter, Lars Foster, the Brownie brothers. Whose idea was this? <laughs> Good luck, team. Alright. Yoo-hoo! I was trying to bet Nino starts out the day. Just sandwiched between Daryl Impey and uh, Alistair Brownlee. No biggie. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh god, here we go. <laughs> Here we go then, it is showtime. This is possibly the most select field ever assembled on Zwift. And uh, uh, Fraser, I was expecting a, a gentle rollout, but it doesn't look like that's what we've got. We've got two riders going from the gun, Alistair Brownlee in pursuit, and I think that's Sebastian Keenley up front. One of the last people we expected, in fact, to be lighting it up off the start line. Given that he's a former Ironman world champ, you'd have thought it would have taken him at least 100 kilometers to get going. Maybe this is what happens if you don't have to swim beforehand. Some big, big numbers being put out there from Alistair Brownlee. What are you expecting, Fraser? Well, not at all. I genuinely didn't expect to see anything other than a bunch rolling out here. Wow, that's completely taken me by surprise. I mean, yeah, that's an unexpected twist. Oh, neutral there. Alistair Brownlee's looking very suspicious in front of it. This is not a neutral first lap. Anyone expecting a slow start would have been a little bit surprised at that. So I imagine there's going to be some sore legs, but it does seem like the bunch is congregating up front. Not that the pressure's eased off. 350 watts still being put out by Alistair Brownlee of Team 3. Who's on a mountain bike? Someone's on a mountain bike. 
Uh, we've also got Adri Frischnick. We've got, uh, we've got eyes on him at the moment. He's, uh, I think he is the man on the mountain bike. So hopefully he's not going to be paying the price of running uh, 29 a mountain bike with the aerodynamics of a bus. But uh, everyone else, I believe, is on Scott Foils, which, uh, which you'd think would probably save them <laughs> in a region of 50 watts. Man on the wheel, come on, man. I'm slaughtered already. We are all together now, minus four riders. Four people are not in this group, one of whom is Rich Max Payne from GMBN. Probably slightly surprised at the speed of this start. I'm in the dirt shed and I forgot to bring a fan, it's so hot. I'm dying and I've got a fan. God knows how he's coping. And we're winding it up again now because we're coming up to the first preem line, the first points that are on offer. And that looks like Daryl Impey taking it from Nino Scherzer, from Amanda Spratt. So fantastic effort from her there. Yep, that is Impey there rolling across the line, having got a little gap as she sprinted so hard, just easing back, waiting for the bunch to come back up towards him. We are on lap three now, just hitting the cobbles. I think this is going to prove decisive, this section, as it's not only demanding for the riders from a bump and a climb perspective, but also this is the run up to that preem line. I think it looks like Daryl Impey just being in a late charge there to overhaul Lars Forster. I was attacking the line. Ah. We've also got Amanda Spratt and Lisa Nordenson here, but it looks like Manon Lloyd might just be struggling to hold the wheels as we crest the top of this rise. There's clear daylight between her and the pack. She's got to grit her teeth and hold on there. Otherwise, she is going to be riding a lonely time trial for the remaining nine laps. Who's that? Whoa. Oh, you dropped Manon. It's like two seconds off the back. Go back for really. I don't have the The bunch is being whittled down ever more, but I just caught a glimpse in there of Adri Frischnick riding his mountain bike, doing a fantastic job to stay in the mix on lap four still. There he is, look, putting in some serious, effort. no wonder his pockets are, are bulging with ride-ons there. That's fantastic. Right then, up front, we've got Darren Impey putting some serious pressure on on the way into that preem line. And this looks like Lisa Norden at the back of that bunch just starting to get tailed off there over that pre line. So one lap later, the man on Lloyd, oh, that's seriously tough. She's now gonna put her time trialing prowess to good use there. This group is beginning to consolidate over the front, but we've definitely lost Lisa Norden from there. That's gonna be a, a bitter pill to swallow for her. Those are some nice wheels to follow. And I think it's that Nino Scherter using a power up there, using the, the drafting power up. So these are all his watts because he's obviously got no one to draft against there. That's Daryl Impey just seeing the danger of the greatest cross country mountain biker of all time, putting in a big effort there, being chased down, I believe by Alistair Brownlee. And we still have Mark Threlfall and Connor Dunn in the mix there, along with Sebastian Keenley and Johnny Brownlee tucked in too. There's no let up after the preem this lap. I think there's some, there's some riders really looking to try and split this group even further. What do you think, Fraser? Who's gonna have the gas at this point, having gone into the red quite as much as they have already? Well, to be honest, Simon, I am quite amazed that we've got two PSN jerseys still in there. I really didn't think that they'd be able to live with this sort of pace. So I still, if I'm honest, have my money on the mountain bikers. These sorts of short, sharp efforts surely plays into their, their wheelhouse. <laughs> Got back to Lisa Norden now, just off the back of that front group, remember, putting in some serious watts. And actually, I can just see in front of her, that I think that's Amanda Spratt. So her, her main rival in the points competition for the women's points, remember, is a separate classification, separate points for women riders. And so the two of them, 
well. Are they going to try and stay apart? Is Amanda Spratt going to wait for Lisa Norden and then try and out sprint her every lap? Or is she going to put her head down and try and time trial her way to the line? It's a big ask. Lisa Norden is renowned for her time trialing skills, but Amanda Spratt is one of the world's best road riders. Lap eight now, and it looks like the Play Sports Network all stars have grown a teammate because uh, that's Manon Lloyd back in the bunch. She's uh, clearly using her track pedigree there. It's as if it was a Madison race or something. Now then, up front, across the preem line, that's Daryl Limpy again and uh, Alistair Brownlee. So between them, they are mopping up a serious truckload of points every time we go across that preem line. Now, Sebastian Keeney looking like he's just starting to let the wheel go, taking with him Mark Threlfall and Manon Lloyd again. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Me, Mark and Manon have been dropped. But I'm trying to see who's putting the pressure on up front. And I think it's Nino Scherter. It is, it's Nino Scherter putting in a huge move. This is fantastic stuff. We've got both the Brownies from different teams, of course, remember, chasing behind. But there he is, the greatest mountain biker of all time, going full gas, trying to split this group once more. He's already dispatched at least four riders out the back. What is going to happen at the end of this move? That's fantastic. See, look at those watts, 500 watts as he came into that corner there. Unbelievable scenes. What an absolute talent this man is. 191 beats per minute. If there's any doubt that he's putting in a max effort here, I think that's been dispelled by looking at his heart rate. Just brilliant. But it's the Brownlees between them. I think that's that's Alistair Brownlee bringing him back, doing that final bit of work there. And Daryl Impey just boxing clever at the back. I'm sure he'll be glad of a bit of respite. Now it's just eased up up front. And meanwhile, we've got Mark Threlfall, Connor Dunn, and Manon Lloyd still just clinging to Sebastian Keenley's coattails. Are they going to be able to bring this gap back? I suspect not. We have four exceedingly motivated and exceedingly talented riders up front. Yeah, when you think about how many world titles and Olympic medals are in that front group right now, it's, it's phenomenal, isn't it? These are athletes from three vastly different disciplines, all fighting it out. And right now, it's impossible to pick a winner. We've seen plenty of action from the Brownlees, plus Daryl Impey, plus Nino Scherter. We've got just three laps to go, so just over six kilometers of racing. We've got an attack up front. Johnny Brownlee's made a bid for freedom with 1.1 kilometers to go. Unsurprisingly, he's been chased down by his brother, who are clearly not teammates here today. And it's now all to play for. We've got Nino Scherter, we've got Daryl Impey, we've got Johnny Brownlee, who's now, I think, going to have to really dig deep to try and stick with his, uh, with his rivals up this preem climb. I think that might be him done. Can he get back on terms? with Nino Scherter, Daryl Impey, and Alistair Brownlee. This is quite the finale, Fraser, with just 800 metres to go. Who is going to take this one? Yeah, I think Johnny went just far too early there. Do you think maybe he was um, um, confused to where the finish line was because he has been distanced? Well, he has. Sometimes though, you've got to roll the dice, haven't you? But it looks like, is that Daryl Impey, who's just off the front, just ahead of Nino Scherter. This is a drag race to the line. Is that Nino's oh. just deployed a power up? He's just deployed a power up. I think he's gone past Daryl Impey. But Alistair Brownlee is pinning him back. Oh my word. We've got 300 meters to go. We've got two of the best athletes in the world head to head. 200 meters to go. Brownlee's made contact, but Nino is not letting up. Has he got anything left in the tank? And now Daryl Impey's oh. come back on turn. Get the power up. Oh, my <laughs> word. Daryl Impey from Mitchelton Scott. Looks like he might have just edged that one from Nino Scherter and Alistair Brownlee. What a final 1.2 kilometers. That was incredible stuff. <laughs> 
Next across the line, uh, this that looks like Chavez actually. So, uh, so a lap rider, remember, and just behind him, Lars Forster pacing Amanda Spratt. Some awesome teamwork there, selfless from Lars Forster. And then still, that was Johnny Brownley there actually. So Johnny finishing in fourth place. We've got a whole mix of lap riders and front runners in here. Next up, I think this uh, is going to be Rich Max Payne from GMBN. Still putting in a staggering effort from him. Cracking work there. And then next up, I would imagine this is going to be Lisa Norden. So she is still time trialing by herself. No team support for Lisa Norden there, unlike Amanda Spratt benefiting from Lars Forster. Now then, we've got uh, Kimberly Morrison there riding alongside Jess Allen. But then this, I think, is going to be the sprint for fifth place. That looks like Connor Dunn. Oh, just rolling Sebastian Keenly. <laughs> And then Mark Threlfall there. Oh, he got it! <laughs> no way! I mean. Perhaps Mark's done a lead out. Perhaps Mark has just been out sprinted by Connor Dunn. I know there's going to be a little bit of rivalry between them. There we are then, official confirmation of the individual results, not the team results. Daryl Impey there, just taking it from Alistair Brownlee, who rolled Nino Scherter on the line. Johnny Brownlee having just dropped back in the closing stages. His brave solo effort not quite coming to fruition. And then a minute back, we've got Connor Dunn just out sprinting Sebastian Keenley ahead of Mark Threlfall. And then further down, you can see Lars Forster pacing Amanda Spratt to great effect just holding off Lisa Norden there, who uh, with a brave, brave individual time trial performance, just not quite managed to get back on terms. Although, uh, literally finishing at the same time. That's that's some effort. Let's dig there. Let's dig. What up, Lisa? <laughs> you too. How are you doing? Long time no scene. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff is harder, hey? <laughs> Rolling for Nino, it's just probably just like a normal day for Nino. <laughs> yeah. oh. Good work, Tim. Daryl, that looked like some race. Congratulations for taking the sprint at the end there, but man, that looked tough. Yeah, it was a, it was a solid race from the guards. I think uh, it's pretty uh, cool. Like, you know, the first lap we were all saying we're going to have a neutral lap, but uh, I knew it. So I knew it was coming. Like, there's no neutral lap. I think if I didn't have the power up, I wouldn't have uh, been able to catch him. Like, I think, uh, you know, he went over the top and I was kind of a little bit sleeping, but then the gap opened up and I was like, oh, that's, that's you know, knowing I still had the power up, I thought, oh, I can just use that um, to catch up to him at least. Was that kind of what you were expecting from those boys? There was actually one point where I nearly got dropped. Like, I just, I think I just made it back on. Like, it was, it was a bit of like road pride, you know, just like, I gotta stay out. I can't let all the triathletes and mountain bikers come kick our asses. So. When I, when I watch like mountain bike world cups and you're coming into the finish if you haven't managed to dispatch someone beforehand it always seems like you start the sprint from quite a long way out certainly compared to road racing do you think that was the do you think that was the mistake then you went a bit early and just just like just a bit too long it was a bit too early <laughs> then i went uh, out of power on the the finish straight but uh yeah, it was good. I had some good legs and, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, mate, it's great to see you with a big grin on your face. It looked like a lot of fun. And when that when that final group of four began to consolidate, I couldn't contain my excitement. Daryl MP, you, and then Johnny and Alistair Brownlee. Like, what a group. In terms of the power that you were putting out, like, you know, how does that compare to, to a mountain bike race? I think it was quite similar. For sure, in a mountain bike, you have the, the technical bits where you have to do much more coordinative stuff but i think from the from the power it was quite similar alistair congratulations how are you feeling after that effort good a bit tired uh, a bit sore on the lungs that was as hard as i've gone for a while yeah and, and each lap you were really making a significant effort to get towards that 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 finish line first so you could mop up as many points as possible right yeah well on each of the 12 laps or 10 laps for those sprints whatever there was five points and only 10 at the finish so there was a lot of points to be had on all the laps. Yeah, and then in terms of that finish, that was a very select quartet of you that came into that final sprint together. Um, how did you envisage that happening when you, you realised you were down to four? Yeah, well, Johnny went early with about a lap to go. Um, I realised that they weren't really chasing Johnny. Um, I thought Nino was on Johnny's team, so 
I was like, right, I can't let Johnny solo it. I'm going to chase him. We caught him at the bottom of the hill, and I was like, <laughs> uh, I thought that was a race over for Johnny there because he'd done his effort. Uh, and then Nino went, and to be honest, I thought he'd probably gone too early, but I thought I should chase. And then uh, I was like, right, and I think the mistake I made was when I caught him, I thought, right, I just ease up a bit here, and really I should have just carried on. Well, how do you how do you feel after that, Lisa? That looked incredibly tough. Well, I actually had my um, my best power, ten minute power of all the times in Training Peaks today. So it was a very very hard start. Yeah, I mean, you did stay in there for quite some time. I mean, you hung on for a, a good number of laps, didn't you? I was trying to stay with Amanda for as long as I could, uh, but unfortunately, she was a little bit stronger and. I think we had like a few meters uh, when she dropped off that other pack and I was trying to get the gap and you know when you're like when you blow you blow and there's not much you can do and then you start to recover but by the time I recovered it was a little bit too late so I could see that gap just like widening and widening and widening. In my very very beginning of my triathlon career I think it was like 2004 maybe I raced Tour of Canberra which Amanda Spratt won. And I think I was second or third, but I think she was a junior at the time and I was, you know, still before I picked up triathlon. So it's pretty cool to be able to get back in the same race with her again. She probably doesn't remember me at all, but it was kind of like a rematch from 2004. Wow, what a race. That was utterly fantastic. Those were your individual results though. What about the big one, the team prize? We have crunched through the numbers and we've got the results for you now. In third place, rounding out the podium, it was team four, so that's Nino Scherter, Johnny Brownlee, and Jessica Allen. The fight for the top spot, though, was super, super close, and falling just four points short, it was team two. Sebastian Keenley, Lisa Norden, and Daryl Impey, meaning that in top spot, it's team three, Alistair Brownlee, Lars Forster, and Amanda Spratt. Two fantastically strong performances from Alistair and Amanda, mopping up all of the sprint points pretty much but fair play also to Lars Forster for dropping back and helping Amanda Spratt hold off Lisa Norden all the way to the finish. In fact let's hear from Amanda Spratt now. Amanda firstly huge congratulations that was some ride personally and also uh, clinching the team victory as well so that all important team prize uh, you guys edged it by four points over oh. uh, over Daryl Impey's team yeah. Yes. <laughs> cool, awesome news. So talk us through it then. So you, 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 you like you stuck with the lead group for a long, long time, and then and then I think you kind of time trialed around, holding off Lisa Norden, who was not far behind, and she's renowned for her time trialing ability as well. So so yeah, talk us through what happened for you. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm completely buckled now. It was worse than a or harder than a world tour race, I reckon. But um, yeah, like we were supposed to have this neutral lap, but obviously some people had other ideas, so it was on from the start. And already on the first lap, we went up the climb and had and had the preem for the for the points on the lap two already. And my heart rate was through the roof, and I was thinking, oh no, I don't know how this is going to go. But I think everyone was sort of on their limit at that point. And I think yeah, when I got tailed off. On one lap, I could see Lisa Lisa got tailed off at the same time, so I was watching her, and I think it was around two or three seconds, and I thought, ah, uh, should I wait for her and hope that she's a typical triathlete and might not have much of a sprint for the for the following laps, or, or yeah, see what I can do. And I could see, yeah, the time was, she was not sort of catching up to me, so after that I decided to give it a crack at a time trial, even though I know she's very renowned for her ability in that area. But, um, yeah, with a few laps to go, actually, my teammate Lars Forster, he came back and helped me as well. So, yeah, it was quite a team effort. And obviously, I could see Alistair was right up there with Daryl and Nino. So, it was a good day. Did you have tactics in place then? Uh, not firm tactics. Like we said, yeah, it could be a good opportunity to, to set me up because, yeah, there were um, five females in the race and we got the equivalent points to the men. So, I knew that was an opportunity. But at the same time, I thought, okay, we're probably not going to be able to keep up with, you know, the top guys when they go. So, sort of a... a yeah, I just kind of said to the guys that they should go with the front and do what they can do and then hopefully I can um, hold off the women. But yeah, it was nice when Lars was there too. Great stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it certainly paid off. Alistair was was smashing it up front. You were smashing it. It's, uh, yeah, a cracking team effort all round. Well done. 
Thank you, thank you. I think I'm going to sleep well tonight, that's for sure. Well, I think all that is left for me to say is a huge thank you to the Scott megastars that have been kind enough to race flat out for our benefit today. That was absolutely brilliant. I don't think I ever thought that I would get to see Nino Scherzer sprinting against Daryl Impey against Alistair Brownlee, but that was every bit as good as I dreamed it would be. Utterly fantastic. So a huge thank you to them. Please give them a big thumbs up underneath this video.